of the traps of the stock market is something called the yield trap. This is the idea that investors are attracted to stocks with high yields. Let me tell you, there are stocks with high yields and there are income stocks and they're very different. And if you have a desire for income, what you want are what you want to invest in, and the list is fairly well known. If you go to any income fund run by a professional, you'll see the same stocks turning up. There is a list of stocks that are good income stocks, and the reason they're good income stocks is because they pay reliable dividends and to the point where the management actually feel they have a responsibility to pay dividends even in the bad times and to pay increased dividends every year. The bank CEOs in Australia, for instance, certainly feel that pressure uh, to constantly pay a decent dividend and these companies make good dividend stocks because of the reliability of the dividend payouts and the progression in dividend payouts and the responsibility of the management to pay those dividend payouts. And the nature of their earnings streams is so reliable that it allows that to happen. So the sort of companies that make good income stocks are the banks. They have effectively a, an oligopoly in this country, very little competition, a captive audience, and they all know what they're doing. They don't compete too hard with each other. And that provides very stable uh, income earning streams off which they pay decent dividends. Some of the other very predictable companies are companies like uh, real estate investment trusts. For instance, you're renting out an office block. You often do that. The tenants are often on 10 year leases. So you know what for 10 years, what your earnings are going to be from that particular office block. And that's the same depending on uh, irrelevant of what type of property it is. Quite, quite, you, quite often they're on very long leases. So very predictable earnings from uh, real estate investment trusts. Uh, a lot of those don't have franking, but uh, they still pay reasonable yields. Uh, utilities would be an obvious one if you think about a toll road. They spend a whole load of money building a toll road and then uh, they might have a 33-year lease on that road where they can charge tolls uh, and uh, they make a very good uh, dividend stocks as well. And the others would be um, infrastructure utility stocks. So if you're paying your gas bill, they're often regulated. They have a, a cap on their return on equity, but they're allowed to return, a, uh, they're allowed to earn a particular amount and out of that predictability uh, comes dividends. You might also notice some of the Canadian pension funds have been buying our companies because they have such reliable uh, dividend streams. And the reason the Canadian pension funds are doing that is because the Canadians are quite unique in that they offer 30 year annuities to their clients. So they need companies that will, are going to reliably pay out these annuities over 30 years and they come all the way to Australia to buy our utility and infrastructure stocks in order to get these reliable earning streams. So that's what makes a good income stock is a company with a reliable earning stream. What doesn't make a good income stock, and you may be surprised to hear this, are companies with volatile earning streams. So for instance, BHP sometimes pays a big yield but they, if you look at their dividend policy, they will pay out a certain percentage of earnings every year and it won't change. But their earnings are very dependent on commodity prices. So in the good years, they'll pay out a big dividend. In the bad years, they'll pay out a small dividend. These are not good income stocks. They may be great trading stocks, but volatile stocks like that will, will move by more than the yield multiple times a year. So although BHP and Rio and Fortescue will occasionally pay great dividends, they're not income stocks because they're not reliable. You can't sleep at night with them. And whereas they may pay well this year, they won't pay well next year. The other stocks that aren't dividend stocks are, are companies that have one big dividend. Say they sell an asset and suddenly they're going to pay a special dividend, which is huge. <laughs> Uh, and people get attracted to that. But what you'll find is the share price on the announcement of that special dividend rises and then starts to drift into the ex-dividend date, may even rise into the ex-dividend date. Then they go ex-dividend and, and everyone loses interest and you lose a whole load of money in the share price. So uh, what you're looking for in income stocks are reliable dividend payers, which means they have reliable earnings streams and there is only a group of 
so many stocks in Australia that will pay you higher than average yields uh, reliably. And if you want to have a look at those, go to the Markets Today newsletter. We have the income portfolio, uh, which has a list of those companies. And those companies are no uh, secret. You'll probably find every major income fund manager, income-based fund manager uh, in the country holds a similar list of stocks. You can go to the Marcus Today newsletter and have a look at our income portfolio and see which ones they are.